Hey everyone, I'm Christina Garibaldi from Us Weekly Magazine. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is Break the Bias. And to celebrate that theme, we have assembled a panel of five fabulous women to talk about their path to success, some of the hardships that they faced, and they will give some advice to young entrepreneurs. So ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to chat with you all. So please introduce yourself. Marcy, you wanna kick us off? Sure, so hi, I'm Marcy Zaroff. I'm the founder and CEO of Eco Fashion Corp. We're a greenhouse of brands that are built on my 30 plus years of driving sustainable fashion, food, and beauty forward for uh, across you know agriculture to popular culture. Hi everybody, I'm Diana Madison and I'm the founder of Diana Madison Beauty. It is a niche beauty brand dedicated to people who have sensitive dry skin and I decided to create this brand out of a need because I suffer from bad cases of eczema and I was tired of using products that inflamed it. So I wanted to create products that prevented it. I'm Katie Capps, co-founder and co-CEO of Higher Dose. We are the biohacking and recovery brand for women. Awesome. Hey, boss ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kim Roxy, K-I-M-R-O-X-I-E. And I'm the founder of Lamique Beauty. Lamique is actually an acronym that stands for love and makeup and kindness. Um, because love and kindness is your true makeup. Because beauty is revealed and not applied. And that's the affirmation I had to tell myself when my hair started to fall out. So I created a clean, non-toxic, vegan, cruelty-free makeup line. And we manufacture in Houston. I'm happy to be here today. So happy to have you. I'm Samantha Khan. I am the owner of Luna Sky, a handmade fine jewelry line based in LA. And we adorn women with love. We are all rocking some of yes. your jewelry today. It's so fantastic. Well, like I said, I am so thrilled to have you all here. We are going to dive into some topics and let's take it back to the beginning. I know you all t told us exactly what you do, but I want to kind of dive into how these passions got started. Marcy, how did you kind of fall into what you do and have this successful businesses? Yeah, so when I was 16, uh, which was really the beginning of my journey. Somebody gave me a book called Living in the Light by Shakti Gawain, and it struck a really deep chord in me that there's more than what we see. And I was the kid with the lemonade stand, so I always was into business, you know, it's wired that way. So once I sort of got that you can actually leverage the power of business and take it beyond what we see, I had this epiphany that, you know, the whole concept of yes and, which is the name of the brand that I'm wearing and why we're here, um, which is really my life philosophy, that you have to give people the yes. So in food, that's taste. In fashion, that's style and beauty. That's, you know, functionality and scent. And, oh, by the way, um, to be socially and environmentally responsible. So over the course of the last 30 plus years, I've been a serial entrepreneur founding uh, a multitude of businesses from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition all the way through to um, partnering with the founder of Aveda and opening the first Aveda concept salon. And then in 1995, I coined and trademarked the term eco-fashion. And people thought I was crazy that nobody would ever buy into that idea. And of course, fast forward, you know, 25 plus years and the whole world is waking up and realizing that fashion as it is today just can't continue, that it's one of the most harmful industries in the world. So um, yes and, seed to style, farm to home, and MetaWare are the brands under the Eco Fashion Corp umbrella. I also founded a brand called Under the Canopy in 1995. So this has been a long and winding journey, but you know I pinch myself every day that today, you know, my journey of styling the world of change and changing the world of style has really taken root. And fortunately, everybody's waking up. Definitely <laughs> proved everybody wrong. I love that. <laughs> Katie, how about you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started my career in investment banking, actually, and uh, I was really burning the candle on both ends. And I found running as like a great release to manage stress. And then I got into endurance sports and got addicted to that natural high. Um, but I realized that, you know, pounding the pavement and running six miles a day wasn't really sustainable. So that's when I got into more holistic therapies like colonics, acupuncture, mm -hmm. Um, and as I was getting into that, you know, field of interest, I stumbled on the infrared sauna. Actually, my business partner introduced me to it. And the first time I tried it, I thought, oh my gosh, why isn't everybody doing this every day? And that's how I knew there was really something to this and that we needed to bring it to the masses. I love that. Samantha, how about you? Yeah, so I started Luna Sky really as a need for myself. I saw this big gap in the industry between 
very dainty fine jewelry and the kind of boho, big silver stone jewelry. And I didn't really see anything that bridged the gap between the two. And so I started just designing for myself. And this was pre-Instagram, Facebook, like e-commerce <laughs> boom. Um, so it was just selling things off of me without a brand, like no website. And then eventually started to think, okay, like I have something my friends want it and strangers were coming up to me and wanting to buy things. So eventually learned how to code and build a website. Um, and then really took off because I came from a background that was heavily in hospitality and taking care of people. And I really saw how jewelry affected the way that women felt about themselves. And it really just illuminates your natural beauty without trying to shape shift and kind of put something in that you maybe don't feel comfortable in. And so the power in that was something that I just like was so drawn to and it kind of really lit a fire to kind of create this company. Right. I think you make a good point that the, you know, there was a gap that you that you saw and that you wanted to fill. And I think Kim and Diana, you both did that as well. I mean, Diana, talk a little bit about that, how you turned, you know, you were suffering from, you know, eczema, dry skin, and you kind of said, you know, I need this out there. Somebody has to make it, let, me, let it be me. Right, you know, my, be my background is in beauty. Mm -hmm. I started wanting to be a TV host. I was working for Entertainment Tonight, mm -hmm. and, um, and I just really wanted to be on camera. And when, at that time, people weren't like open to diverse faces. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna like leave here and start a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And that took off, so I was like literally doing YouTube videos a day, talking about other people's products, doing celebrity interviews. So my background is like, you know, I'm a host, I'm a journalist. Uh, but it came to a point where I had executive produce a, a beauty competition show for a lifetime, and I was fascinated with the beauty space and the revolution in beauty and how things were changing and how like some of my friends were becoming like um, these huge brand owners, and I was fascinated by it. But I didn't want to dive into something I had no clue about. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was pregnant with my daughter, Colette, and I got really bad cases of eczema. This had never happened before. I never had it before to be like, oh, this is normal. So when I saw the dermatologist, I got like steroid cream, the topicals, I was using it, but I hated using steroid cream. I'm like, is there anything natural I could use? And he was like, go to Rite Aid and buy Cetaphil. That is like probably the only thing out there that's clean. And I did go to Rite Aid and I did buy Cetaphil, but I was kind of like, you know, that influencer hat and the creator hat, I'm like, this, I don't know if I would tell people I'm using this product. Like you would use it and throw it under your sink and not tell people. So I was like, this needs to be done better and cooler. Like what kind of product could I make that will heal my skin and at the same time people will be proud to put it on their bathroom counter. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, for four years I like did some research and finally I discovered the prickly pear seed oil which comes from a cactus. And the one I use for my product comes from Morocco. And I realized that that is a great preventative for any future breakouts. It's super hydrating, the skin soaks it up. And I created my first product, Glotopia. And still, um, you know, when you are, um, you know, starting a business, mm -hmm. it's hard. It, it takes a lot of money to create a brand. So I didn't want to like dive in and create this whole collection and not sure if people are going to buy it. I started with one product and I was like, if this takes off, we're going to go into this. Mm -hmm. And it went viral on Instagram, and it was so crazy seeing what could happen with the power of social media. And so through that, I was able to launch more products, and my products are meant to heal people's skin. But it's funny because of my background of having such a huge beauty community, it's kind of become a, a step before makeup. Mm -hmm. And also, I am Armenian, I love to wear makeup. It's like we're born with the liquid liner in our, <laughs> in our mom's womb. So like, for, it's interesting how it's kind of like developed into that, but it was really started as a, as a need to like heal my skin. Right. But now a lot of famous makeup artists and celebrities are using it my products before they put their glam. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting how brands could actually shift during the process. Yeah, it's amazing mm -hmm. the trajectory of the of your of your business. And Kim, you you started out in a mall, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me how you kind of came to be. Yeah, so for me it started when I was 16 like mm -hmm. Marcia talking, you know, like going to the makeup counter for prom mm -hmm. and walking away looking like this jacket I have on, <laughs> right? Like ghost face. Yeah. Um, not having makeup that really fit me and showed mm -hmm. up on my skin properly. So fast forward to graduating from college, I decided to open up my own makeup shop in Houston mm -hmm. um, to celebrate skin tones, yeah. to celebrate all women. And um, while I was there, I ran that for 14 years. Oh. So I got to hear women's stories day in and day out, and I enjoyed it. 
And um, finally, I decided um, my mom had passed away from metastatic breast cancer. Right. And my mom wore makeup every day. Mm -hmm. So you talk about being, you know, yeah. like my sisters never leave the house without their makeup on. And I'm just thinking, you know, my mom could have put herself at risk, you know, and we could be at risk because 75% of beauty products marketed to women who look like me are toxic. Yeah. And that's a major problem. Yeah, and so um, I decided to do something about it uh, to create a line that was cleaner, non-toxic, but could show up on my skin. Mm -hmm. And that was so important to me. And um, that's what I decided to do. Um, and I got with my chemist who had recently retired from a major cosmetic brand. Mm -hmm. And um, we created the line together. And uh, now, you know, no girls <laughs> have to go to prom with that ashy face <laughs> uh, um, ever again. Yes. Um, and that's, you know, that's my reasoning, but then also to keep us safe. I love that. I think yeah. that's fantastic. Samantha, when did you realize that you were turning your passion into a business? Um, I think when my friends and family stopped asking me if I'm doing that jewelry thing still, <laughs> honestly. Um, but, you know, I think like any business there is an evolution and you kind of are so in the weeds of it that to really like step back and be like oh my gosh like I have a business here I mean mm -hmm. I, I still have those moments even though you know it's been 10 years in I feel like each different phase evolves into a different level of your business and you level up and you kind of change and grow and mm -hmm. so um, I think honestly just being able to create my own schedule and kind of make decisions that aren't necessarily like fear-based or out of desperation or just circumstance was kind of when I started to feel like, okay, things are kind of settled and like this is here and I have something. Right, definitely. Did you feel that as well when you had that like aha moment? Like, I, I did it. Well, I think honestly, you know, we we started with a very small friends and family round of funding. Mm -hmm. So we were very like scrappy in how we launched. And we actually opened in the basement of a shared wellness center. Mm -hmm. um, but within two weeks, I'll never forget, like I was actually working the front desk and somehow Leonardo DiCaprio walked in with an entourage of people um, out of nowhere. And that's when I realized, okay, there's something there. <laughs> I, I would say so. <laughs> that's a good day when Leonardo DiCaprio walks in. <laughs> um, Marcy, how about you? Well, because I've been on this journey for so long, it's kind of a connecting of the dots that was happening. It's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, our mm -hmm. first basic need being food, and then that aha that this is all about lifestyle, yeah. right? So each step of the way, it's been this, as they say, the journey of a thousand miles, um, continuing to evolve from food to fashion, where originally there were all these stigmas with you know sustainable fashion, and they I think for me it was always about kind of setting that vision and saying that if people are already embracing food and being more conscious and eventually they'll catch on to fashion because you know as we evolve and you plant that seed of consciousness it will continue to grow mm -hmm. right yes. so for me to see you know where the world is today um, from where it was before where there were all these stigmas and I've set the last you know 25 plus years really breaking the stigmas that you have to give anything up which is why I named my brand yes and mm -hmm. because it's really all about no compromise you know it's not about giving up style quality fit color comfort price mm -hmm. um, but it's about the and as well oh by the way you can also you know be uh, mindful of human and environmental wellness mm -hmm. farmer and worker welfare and future generations too definitely Kim how about you when where was that aha moment for you yeah I think my aha moment came um, I remember we were getting ready to launch um, right at the start of the pandemic mm -hmm. and um, this movie was coming out and I had sent some products to the set, not thinking anything about it. Um, and I get a call and they're like, have you watched the movie Like a Boss? And I'm like, uh, not yet, I'm gonna go see it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I see Lamique brow brushes in it and I see all this Tiffany Haddish is using your makeup, you know, and using your tools in the movie. And I was like, really? Because we didn't pay for that to happen. So um, for that to show up in that way, I think that was like a really big deal for us. And the movie was all about 
creating a beauty brand and all of that. And I mm -hmm. really just saw my future in that movie. Yeah. Um, and that was a big moment for me. Definitely. Before we move on to the next section, Diana, I know you said it kind of like blew up on social media. Yeah. Where was that? Like, was there like a specific post where you saw somebody using your brand? Or where, where did you realize that this kind of Can blew I up? tell you, it's just like throughout the last 14 years, I've met such amazing people in the industry. Uh, I'm born and raised in LA. Mm -hmm. I literally was born and raised a street up from here called Little Armenia. I have created such an amazing network of friends here in the beauty industry and the entertainment industry. When I launched a product, everybody was really supportive. And that is like the beautiful thing about just my friends and women. Um, you know what, beauty, it's interesting because people are excited about a product that's gonna help them look and feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of thriving on that kind of essence, right? Like what's that new product? How could it help me, you know, how is it gonna help my skin? How is it gonna like make me feel good? So it went off of that base and it just like, everybody started posting about it. And some of my favorite celebrities were using it, which was so crazy. Um, you know, some of the biggest magazines in the world, including Us Weekly wrote about mm -hmm. it and it was just viral, it just took off. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing I have to say is when I get the feedback from people that they tell me it helps their skin, mm -hmm. they love the way the products feel on their skin. Like for me, I'm like, wow, this, this came out of a need. I didn't have any strategy to create a business. It was just like I needed it. And to be able to help others is just, that is like the best feeling in the world. Oh, definitely. But it's, you know, uh, it's great that you have so much support and th that you all have so much support, but so many people that are starting their own businesses go through hardships. They suffer from, you know, inequalities, stereotypes, things like that. They're kind of, you know, you're pigeonholed before you can kind of create your own space. What were some of those hardships that you had to go over? I know, Marcy, you said that people, when you coined that phrase, eco fashion, people were like, oh no, that's not going to yeah. be a thing. A lot of resistance yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. raising money. I mean, I look back at, you know, <laughs> trying to raise money a de mm -hmm. decade or two decades ago where, you know, walk into a room and not only am I talking, not only am I a woman, a woman, when I would walk into a room of, you know, male investors and try to raise money as a woman, you know, not only were they looking at me cross-eyed like, yeah, sure, you know, <laughs> we're going to write you a check, mm -hmm. but layer the eco onto that and it made it like a double whammy. Um, and then layer fashion onto it, and it was even that much more of you know resistance. So um, today, I mean, the money that's flowing into the sustainable fashion movement or the fashion industry to drive climate action and change in fashion mm -hmm. just blows my mind because there was so much resistance. And you know, I love seeing you know where the Me Too movement went because as a woman in business, you know, and I look back at my own life experiences, and you know when you're dating investors, you really have to look at it as a two-way street mm -hmm. because don't jump on that first, you know, investment opportunity because, you know, today um, we have our eyes a lot wider, but, you know, I think there was a naivety or at least um, we didn't have the support system when I was raising money. And now mm -hmm. I'm back in the game raising money again. And it's a whole different, it's a whole different, different game. Yeah, so. I see everybody shaking their head and kind of agreeing. <laughs> like everybody's kind of been in the same boat. Kim, how about you? Have you had to overcome any of the hardships in launching your business? Oh yeah, most yeah. definitely. I actually launched my business with the rewards-based crowdfunding campaign mm -hmm. that I deal with my potential customers. Mm -hmm. So I took um, the customers that I had from my store told them the vision around the product line and um, launched it with them on a platform called iFundWomen. And that's how we got the seed money to launch our e-commerce platform. Um, so I feel like, you know, if, because I did, I had my pitch deck, I went out to go try to raise a pre-seed round and it, and it just didn't work out. And I was, uh, I started to investigate and look at the statistics and I was like, this is like climbing up a hill that doesn't quite seem like you'll get to the top. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I went back to my potential customers and they showed up mm -hmm. and uh, we called we called it the show them who we are campaign um, and we raised about seventy five thousand dollars in 30 days. And so um, that was able to take care of the things that we needed essentially to get on. Um, and then from there, I've you know, done many pitch contests. I have done um, a lot of partnerships and things like that. but. Um, definitely raising money because um, we're actually, you know, just opening up our seat round two and, you know, raising money is daunting, but at the same time, it has to be done because we have the traction and the future and the vision to get it, you yeah. know, so um, we're going to go forth anyway, but yeah, definitely. And I got stories for days. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure everybody does. Uh, Samantha, how about you? Yeah, I think I come from an industry that's traditionally run by men. It's an old school trade. 
And I think being a woman, and especially 20 at the time when I started my business, um, you know, I would go in and to all these stone vendors and supply chain uh, manufacturers and you know, it's almost like it's cute that you're in there. You know, they're like, do you have insurance? Like, mm -hmm. what's your deal? You know, obviously I have insurance. I'm, you know, a jewelry company. Um, and then flash forward, you know, like 10 years later and we have all of those supply chains knocking on our door to come work with us. Um, so I think, yeah, it's hard to get respect in the beginning, but I think you have to be disciplined and strategic and just, uh, your own advocate. I think if you are in an industry and you need a lot of val outside validation and support um, with what you're doing, I think it's going to be difficult to kind of proceed because there's going to be a lot of challenges. And if you are not your biggest support system, I think it's really hard. No, I think that's some great advice. I mean, Katie, do you feel like that as well? Like you just have to be your, your biggest advocate? Yeah, I think so. You just really have to believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then if you have that faith, you can overcome the roadblocks. Like some of the challenges that we encountered in addition to the fundraising is we were bringing this unknown technology to the masses. Mm -hmm. So when we started out, it was 2015, nobody had heard of infrared. They're like, is this a tanning salon? Do I need goggles? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think also just getting the right advisors on board, whether they be like medical or experts in the field to kind of just back you up in your vision, that was super helpful for us. Yeah, Diana, how about you? I think like um, if you're just starting out and you need help on how to get this going, you're confused, you don't know how to start, a great way is like find your community. If you don't have one, build it. And you just gotta look around to the person sitting next to you. Um, networking is a great way to do it. And with social media, I feel like it's so easy to network with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's sort of really easy this day and age to create a community when you have your vision and you know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Once you like build a community, like you have the support, like mm -hmm. your, you know, your mm -hmm. makeup store, right? Mm -hmm. Your customers supported you. For me, it was my community in the entertainment industry and uh, in beauty. And um, I think in regards to funding, I, my opinion is I have been self-funding myself, but I do feel like at some point I'm going to be needing the help to raise money. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just to get everything aligned where you're at that point where there won't be any, you know, kinds of like questions of like, can you do this? Like, no, I'm already doing it. This is where we're at. So mm -hmm. get to that point where you have something to show. Um, Cause I feel like for me right now might be too premature, but I know in the next year it will be a great place to go and ask for money. Um, but I feel like with social media, with so many different outlets, you could really self-fund yourself for a time being. Right. Yeah, no, I, the power of social media, I'm sure you all feel that mm -hmm. as well. It's, it's the best way to get your voice out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in those boardrooms and talking to those men and kind of, you know, being like, this is what I have, this is my business, did you ever have those I'm a boss moments, Marcy? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, look, you know, time will tell, right? Mm -hmm. So right. when you prove yourself, then people start to take you more seriously and you just keep building on that. And, you know, now 30 years in the making, I can walk into, I'm very comfortable walking into a room of, you know, a, a full boardroom of men and holding my own, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, it was always about bridging the tribe and the boardroom or the fashionista and the tree hugger and building those bridges um, and just believing in where I was taking this movement um, has panned out and to the point where now, you know, they're coming after me, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, I think about everyone talking about funding here. The beauty of where we are today is there are so many women funding um, private equity groups and, mm -hmm. and um, women networks that you can leverage there you know women are supporting women in mm -hmm. ways that they never have before yeah so I think that's changing the whole game yeah I mean Diana what advice would you give to a young you know female entrepreneur that wants to get started that wants right. to sit where well, you all are sitting I'll tell you this and this is a quote uh, I don't know who said it so I'm sorry if I don't know who said it but it's be so good that they can't ignore you mm -hmm. And this is so true because when I started as a host, like I wouldn't get any opportunities. And then I started my own YouTube channel that developed into four channels and became a huge digital media studio. Then I sell that right before the pandemic to a big American studio. So 
after that point, like, I was like, all right, I'm a boss. Like, I got this. <laughs> and guess what? Even today, as before I came here, I got this email, and it was such a ridiculous email of, like, for a deal I'm going to be doing and what they're offering me. And I'm like, I really told my lawyer, I'm like, are people, do they people even know who I am just because they see the hair and the lashes? And that's what I said. They see the lashes and they see the hair. They think I'm like going to take an offer like this. Like, no, put your foot down and be like, I deserve this. If I'm bringing this to the table, I deserve this much. And it's okay to walk away from deals if, it, if you feel like it's not valuing you. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times you get intimidated and you don't want to be rude. Like, no, this doesn't serve me. Right. Let's mm -hmm. talk about a deal that could serve you and could serve me and it's equal and not offensive. Mm -hmm. So that happened to me this morning before I came in, so it's so crazy. But um, I was actually offended by that. Yeah. And I do feel like, um, I don't know, it's like a transition. I think people are like changing and shifting, but it's still a work in progress, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. definitely. I love that. Be so good they can't ignore you. Do any of you have any other mantras that you go by? I do. Yeah. So I'm wearing a love sweater from Yes And, which really kind of sets the tone for one of my favorite quotes, which is, work is love made visible mm -hmm. by um, Khalil Gibran, which really is when you love your work, it's not work, it's love. Mm -hmm. So every day, wake up with a state of gratitude and just stay true to who you are. And then the other one is one plus one equals 11, which is my favorite number, everybody. It's one of my Marcyisms, because um, really it just symbolizes the fact that we're, str we're exponentially stronger together than yeah. we are apart. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I mean, I always think, this is something that my dad has always taught me growing up, but keep it simple. I always think mm -hmm. about that whenever I'm in a meeting or going throughout my day. I feel like it's so easy to just get like, lost in the sauce of everything, mm -hmm. that just keeping things simple and reminding yourself what you're doing every day, because honestly, it's, I mean, it is deep, but it's not that deep at the end of the day. And so, you know, things can change and you can pivot and you can kind of, um, you know, recreate the narrative there and, mm -hmm. you know, just keeping it simple is something that I think is pretty powerful. Yeah, definitely. I know that's something that a lot of women don't usually talk about too much is emotion in the workplace. And sometimes that's equated with not being a good leader. But I feel like obviously you have all proved that wrong mm -hmm. because emotion and passion kind of go hand in hand when you're starting your business. I mean, Kim, how, how has emotion and passion kind of combined to create your business? Yeah. Um, actually, I was just sitting up here soaking in the gems that the ladies were just giving. Mm -hmm. Um, because to answer your question and kind of tie that in with, with something that I think about mm -hmm. a lot is I kind of have this voice in my head that says, like, bring us all with you. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about, like, sitting in this chair right now and I think about that, it's, I come from a resilient people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think about my ancestors. I think about my great-grandmother. I think about my mother. Like, I think about these people. I'm like, bring us all with you. Yeah. Like, everything that we put inside of you, um, we didn't die. We fought. That means that you're a fighter mm -hmm. and you will win, right? And so I think for me, emotion um, and passion work hand in hand. I think that's women's strength. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we look at it like as a bad thing because it's like, you know, your time of the month or whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, is this the right day to have this meeting, right? Um, but I think actually it, it makes you more of that super, it gives you a superpower mm -hmm. because you can tap in and you can have discernment that to me, the other species just doesn't have. Yes. And so I think that that's just something that we have innately um, that I think is our strength. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen my friends use it. I've seen my sisters use it. Uh, for me, I use it in business. Um, and um, as being a beauty person and a person, a makeup artist, I hear all kinds of things. I never got certified as a therapist, but I've been a therapist, right? <laughs> I've never been certified for like domestic violence, but I've had women sit in my chair who've been through different things. And that's what I think bringing that emotion mm -hmm. and that passion together is, is synonymous yeah. uh, to success. No, definitely. I think sometimes too, people can confuse being reactive to being emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think there is such a difference between the two where if you're reactive all the time and you're just so triggered by your environment constantly, that can sometimes come off as emotional or too passionate, but that's a totally different you know, situation, I think, especially as women being intuitive and really listening to yourself. And like, you know, if you know something's off, like it is off. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like there's so much noise in the world now that it's easy to kind of stray away from that and not be so in touch with yourself. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's, that's more like leading with emotion and leading with passion and really just, you know, 
sticking true to yourself and not being super reactive to everything mm -hmm. because there's things that are going to constantly be happening. I mean, yeah. I'm sure before even eight o'clock this morning, there's just like 20 fires to put out <laughs> for all of us. So, you know, I think there is a difference there and, and one of them is definitely you can use to your advantage and sure. strength. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you have to be authentic, mm -hmm. right? Like I always get told, like tone it down. Like, no, why do I have to tone it yes. down? Yes. <laughs> this is yes. who I am. Yes. I'm gonna walk in. <laughs> I'm gonna be energetic. That's just how I was built. Like I can't tone it down. <laughs> Let the energy adjust to my energy in the yeah. room. Like, yeah. why do I have to change the way I am for other people? Yeah. And that took me a long time to get to even say that. Where like I no longer walk into the room and feel out the energy. Like, no, this is my energy. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you don't like it. Then maybe we shouldn't be working together. Exactly. Right. And there's going to be people who actually like my energy and are going to gravitate toward my energy and just be authentic and be you. Because even if you have a bad day, you're not going to get judged for having it. And everybody has a bad day. And these days, every day is a bad day, right? It's a good day. And then the next minute, it's like, oh, wait, what happened? So it's like, just be authentic and be you. And the right people that are meant for you are going to yeah. gravitate to you. Because a big thing I've learned is trying to work with people that are not your right people and you mm -hmm. push it and you push it and then you like learn the hard way that like, you know, the deal goes wrong or it was just wasn't the right like, you know, project. And I was just like, wait, why was I pushing that? It just yeah. wasn't right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So don't push things that aren't right for you. You will know when it's a good match. Yeah. Right. And not everybody has to like you. I feel mm -hmm. like the difference between like kind of coming into your own and feeling comfortable in what you're doing is you realize not everyone's going to like you and that's okay, but like, I want everyone to respect me. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you like me, but like, you're going to listen to what I have to say and like, and that's okay if you don't agree, but like, yeah. No, definitely. Katie, how about you? Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important to be able to read people's energy mm -hmm. um, because, you know, not everybody's fully transparent mm -hmm. about their wants and needs, but if you can kind of intuit um, people's real motivations, then it's easier for you to come up with a win-win without mm -hmm. even having to go there. Yeah. Um, and we all know, you know, win-wins always result in the best, you know, successful outcomes. Yeah. And you all have built such amazing communities and audiences and customers that are loyal. I mean, what does that community mean to you? And what is it like giving back and making a change in these people's lives, Kim? Yeah. I mean, my community built me, mm -hmm. made me. Uh, when I opened up my store in Houston, uh, wanting to celebrate them, I was 21, mm -hmm. like graduated. They, they made me. Yeah. They, they, they made our business. Um, they took us serious. Um, when I launched a product brand, they put their money on the table and made it happen. I mean, they made me. So I think for me, it's not even giving back. It's just, it's just doing and being a part of what has already been uh, seeded inside of me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, you know, I understand uh, the responsibility mm -hmm. um, to the fact that, you know, for me is showing up is, is letting people know uh, I'm breaking bias just by showing up. Yeah. Um, I open up my mouth, I'm, I'm breaking barriers, right? And so I think for me, it's just being that responsible person in my community um, and, and just doing that equal give that has already been given to me. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Diana, how about you? I, you know, I come from like a uh, history too. Like we have a survival gene being Armenian. Naturally, mm -hmm. if you're Armenian, you're a survivor. And um, for me, it's just like, I'm just going to keep going and keep building and keep dreaming big mm -hmm. and keep pushing barriers. And for me, it's really my passion that drives me. And it's beautiful along the way that I could help people get jobs. I could inspire people mm -hmm. that look like me. And um, for me, it's just like, I don't know, there's no limit to what I could achieve. And of course, there's obstacles around uh, uh, you know, that you'll encounter. But for me, like, I don't know, it's just an obstacle. My ancestors went through a genocide. Like, I could get through this. I could make anything happen. Mm -hmm. The big thing is just to have belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. Definitely. No, Marcia, I know you want to say something. Yeah, so my mentor of over 25 years, the founder of Aveda, always said it's about the people you surround yourself with. And it kind of started, you know, in my early years where I would just find my people that we all were speaking the same language and sharing core values. And back in the day, you know, I could honestly say everybody in the organic community globally probably knew each other. It was that small. To see where it's come today, where over 83% of Americans are buying organic food, at least occasionally. It just shows how this has this whole movement has crossed over, and 
the community within my company is one that mirrors the community at large, right? We're all in this together. Everybody in my company, we create a culture where it's about, you know, win-win, right? It's about we're working together, we're collaborating, we're co-creating. And that, to me, is the name of the game. It's about unity in the community. And when I am in my farms in India, which is where Yes And products start, and I'm working with the women farmers where they're planting the seeds, and the seeds represent life, to me, that's my happy place. It's like water for chocolate, right? Where the community starts there, and then we take that energy all the way up the supply chain you know, to the finished product, and we create a community of people that we're empowering to vote with their dollars and really leverage the power of fashion to transform humanity. Definitely, it's all about a great community. All right, I have another question. If you were to give advice or a message to a young entrepreneur, a young female entrepreneur, what would it be? So I would say um, to a young entrepreneur that never say I can't, always say how can I? Because you can create whatever reality you wish to see. I would say embrace your flaws. Uh, me having a really bad case of eczema that I was really embarrassed of actually helped me create my beauty brand. Uh, me being too Armenian has helped me um, inspire other Armenian women in America and around the world to dream big. So. Things that you're embarrassed of, I mean, I feel like you have to really embrace it and um, see how you could explore to bring positivity out of it instead of looking at it in a negative way. I would say invest in yourself first. Um, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Ultimately, investors are betting on you, so you're your number one asset and always keep that in mind. I would say to a young girl, I was kicked out of high school at 16. Look, I'm not perfect. Um, at the same time, I understand that my risk taking and my bad assery work for my better. <laughs> so um, I would say just embrace um, all of the things and don't try to be perfect like they try to tell us to do. Uh, I would say take those chances, take those risks. Um, and that's what I want you to do so you can become all that you want to be. I would say there is no one way to do things. There's no right path. So just start somewhere and stay curious. Before we wrap up, I would love for you each to tell me, in just a few words, what is your definition of a girl boss? Marcy, you want to kick us off? Unstoppable. You know, just mm -hmm. setting, you know, setting where you want to go, be willing to pivot, understanding the power of energy. And for me, it's leveraging the power of business to transform the world. Mm -hmm. Diana? For me, like, girl boss is someone who dreams big, mm -hmm. doesn't let any obstacles get in her way, is passion driven and inspires her community and is able to reach grounds to, you know, fulfill not only her dreams, but other people's as well. Mm -hmm. So with me, like with my career, I always want to be able to give back to others. And I feel like my passion has driven me to reach levels that I don't think people with my background have reached. And um, I can't wait to see what else I get to do, you know, in my lifetime. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, for me, being a girl boss means being empowered mm -hmm. and controlling your own destiny. And in my case, I felt like I was just unemployable. I couldn't work for anybody else anymore. Mm -hmm. So once you reach that point, you're like, okay, I got to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. I love that. Kim? My definition of a girl boss is someone who knows she's a boss first and a girl second. I love that. And, <laughs> you know, I, I think that... I'll take that one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. She understands that she can... Um, not live by the title, uh, but she's entitled to everything mm -hmm. that she puts forth to do. Love that. Coin that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> um, a girl boss to me is someone who creates their own definition of success. Mm -hmm. I think someone who stays curious and knows that not everyone's in the same race and really just staying intentional to what speaks to them and makes them happy. Yeah. Well, ladies, I can't thank you enough for such a fabulous conversation. It has been inspiring and absolutely wonderful to get you all together to talk about this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. This is so yes. great. Yes. Yes. I know. It's just the beginning. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. I feel like I'm in a girl group. This is so <laughs> right. cool. I always wanted to Can be in one. <laughs> Love it. Uh, we want to wish everybody a very happy International Women's Day, and we yeah. want to encourage and urge everyone to break the bias in their life. Get out there and do it. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, really appreciate you. it. Thank you. <laughs>